on that note, even if you've changed your major, even if you've failed a class, even if you've had a downward trend in your GPA, you make it. Hi again. I recently went out to Arizona to interview my friend Forrest on his journey in getting into dental school. Uh, I asked him a series of 10 questions, and as always, you can find timestamps for those questions down below in the description. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. Hi, my name is Michael Yu. I'm a first year dental student at Western University, and I'm joined by my good friend here, one of my best friends here, uh, yep. Forrest. So I'm Forrest, um, Forrest Edgard. I'm from South Alabama, um, from the little town of Fairhope, Alabama, right across the Mobile Bay from Mobile, Alabama. I went to University of South Alabama for undergrad, go Jags. Um, and then Michael and I met. Um, Michael and I met in August 2017 when we started the Midwestern University Masters program. The really rigorous program yeah. that still haunts us today. I started undergrad at University of South Alabama in 2013. Um, I graduated high school in 13, um, and I started with this kind of looming question of, okay, I want to go into healthcare. I think I want to be a doctor, but I don't know exactly, you know, what, what specific, you know, field within healthcare I wanted to do. If it was medicine, if it was, I thought initially, okay, it'll probably be physical therapy. You know, the, there was this pre-med crew that I was like, just not fitting quite in with. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got this like pride about me. I was like, I don't want to be a physical therapist. I want to go to medical school. But I was still like kind of on that train. So I shadowed um, a physical therapist, an inpatient physical therapist at um, the University Medical Center, mm -hmm. which was a, a level one trauma center in Mobile. Um, and I just found that I didn't like inpatient physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so there's nothing really about PT as a field. No, it was just, I just your, your heart was going a different way. Exactly. Yeah. I, I was already kind of one foot out the door as far as like pre-PT. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of did it for me. I was like, mm, no, I don't want to um, just be stuck in a hospital. I got an interview for the pre um, acceptance program. Oh no! No yeah, way! Yeah, I did. Um, for med school. For med school. For wow. South Alabama okay. med school, and All I right. didn't go to it. What? Yeah. Like you because, got an interview, but you didn't go to I it. Because I got the interview, uh -huh. and then by the time the interview rolled around, I was like, "No, I want to do physical therapy." Wow. So that's what happens when you excuse me. If you start closing yourself off to, off to options, your your mind might change at some point. So mm -hmm. that was one of the biggest lessons I've ever learned. Yeah. Even though I didn't wind up wanting to do medicine, mm -hmm. um, I was like, you know, a year into undergrad, I was like, well, gosh, like I really squandered that opportunity. I had the interview for the pre-acceptance program, mm -hmm. and I just totally didn't go to it. Mm -hmm. So you kind of closed off the door there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Don't, don't do something like that. Coming to into the decision to go dental was it came pretty late. It was about I'd say about midway through junior year. Um, I was like, it's pretty late. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and, you know, because I, I remember shadowing over the summer um, after junior year, and that being like the real, like, when it became really real, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that is the path I want to take. Like, I'm fully sold on dentistry. And it didn't hurt that, you know, dental is always like right there with PT and like all the working conditions, pay, um, you know, stress, um, all these factors, you know, physical therapy was always up there and then dental is consistently like number two. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. 
that and dental hygiene. Uh -huh. yeah. I think I had a 385 graduation GPA um, in four years. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Hey, stop. <laughs> Can I get that? Can I get that? Thank you. Probably going to be audible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to put it right over here. There you go. Yeah. No. Go on. Place. Place. Okay. I love um, your dog. <laughs> I love that dog so much. Okay, she's anyway. Sweet, sweet yeah. girl. But yeah. when Michael gets here, she's like. Yeah, it's it's time to I'm like, I'm like rage. The, I'm like the bad uncle that just allows yeah, every seriously. single bad thing to inspire, happen. He inspires like the worst behavior. And everybody. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No. Um, I remember your first DAT was pretty, like, it was up there. It was okay. Yeah, it was up Thank there. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That first one I took in January 16, my first one, I got an 18 academic average. Um, then I took the first part of that summer, so I finished that senior year. Uh, sorry, I finished that junior year, and I studied for the first part of the summer and took it in July. That was between junior and senior year, mm -hmm. and I got a 20. Wow. And that is what I applied with. Yeah. 70th percentile. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I got an interview mm -hmm. in my state school, University of Alabama, Birmingham. Um, and that, I mean, it was actually a pre-December interview, mm -hmm. um, though it was not enough to get me in. I did, I, I just got a rejection a few mm -hmm. months later. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they don't, if they just have no wait list or if I was just, by chance I didn't get put on it. I just Who knows got these rejected. things about dental schools, right? Yeah. yeah. Loved Midwestern. That was my second interview. Um, at another interview at Nova Southeastern in Port Lauderdale. Um, went to that interview, got put on their wait list indefinitely. Got the fourth interview, and I was like, should I even go to this interview? Like, it's weird. It's like this school I've never heard of in Florida, um, outside of Tampa. Like, what is this? And wound up going to it. My mom and I drove down there together. Um, stayed the night in a terrible motel in um, Bradenton, Florida. And <laughs> it was weird because it was a group interview. Um, and even though it was a group interview, I felt like it re went really well. Um, I even remember being like, coming out of there like, wow, I didn't expect that. Like, mm. it's a group interview. Mm. And then lo and behold, four days later on, on that Monday, I got a call from from them and it was an acceptance. So I was like, what? I'm waiting, you know, I've been on the wait list for months with, um, at this point, like yeah. it was March, 2017. Um, been on the wait list with Midwestern and NOVA for a couple months at that point. And I was like, well, great. I am I really want to go to Midwestern, but this is, this is- An acceptance is an acceptance. Is, yeah, yeah, acceptance is an, yeah. is an acceptance. Like. I was ecstatic. Time went by and I started like really thinking about everything. I was like really freaked out because I was like, am I ready to start dental school? Like, yeah, I did really well in undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, did well on the DAT, but dental school is a really different volume. You know? um, am I ready for it? And I eventually decided no, I'm not ready for it. Yeah. And there was a, like a, also like this nagging feeling like I belong at Midwestern. Mm -hmm. Like I really need to go out there. Um, and on that note though, like it takes a lot of maturity to do that. Mm -hmm. like, it takes a lot of maturity to reflect and think about dental school and be like, it's gonna be hard. And yeah. am I in the right place? Am I in the right mindset to go to dental school right now? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, life makes that decision for you and tells you, yeah. it made it for me, it tells you, you're not mature enough, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. going to keep you behind a few years. Mm -hmm. And you, you come out of it in the end, just such a different person. Yeah. And yeah, sorry, that little you're, tidbit there. You're good. But um, you had this feeling of coming to Midwestern. Yeah, I really, I, I just felt like a special connection with Midwestern. Through like talking to my dad, um, he and I determined 
maybe this master's master's program that I was contacted about at Midwestern is not such a bad plan. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it was not a bad plan. Yeah. Um, it was hard. Have you talked about on the channel yeah. how hard yeah. it was? Yeah, it was probably one of the worst years of my life. It was. Yeah. Not in the, like the like gloomy sort of sense. It was like it challenged you, and it really took a lot of willpower and ridiculous. Yeah, a lot, um, an extraordinary amount of being at school, mm -hmm. studying, and on top of that, trying to live your life. Definitely, like, it, it it took all of both it. of us. Yeah. Coming out of it, even like at the the end of the program. I think Michael nor I, um, neither Michael nor I, were happy that we did it. You know, I, I failed a class, like I'm stuck here for another year if I want to get this degree. Um, and it's just been a world of heart hurt. Um, so we were like, oh my gosh, like what have we done to our lives? Right. The class I failed was immunology. Um, hard class. So annoying. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a, just a bear of a class. Um, it's so annoying because it's a two credit hour class. I failed a two credit hour class and that prevented me from getting the degree. However, it was a saving grace. Um, I tell you because um, our program allowed for um, the retake of three classes that you get C's in. Um, then I have an F as well. I failed that one class. Um, and I also took a couple of elective classes. Mm -hmm while I did that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, wound up coming out of the Masters with a 3.08 wow. GPA. Wow. Yeah. Because it's, with that comeback. Right. So would you do it again? Yeah. You would? I would. Yeah. yeah. That makes me want to say I want to do it again. Yeah. Just I, for the friendships that I've gained. Right. Yeah. yeah. We gained really good friendships in mm -hmm. our program. And that's kind of a separable thing. Mm -hmm. The friendships, like, when you go through a hard, hard experience with a quality set of people, mm -hmm. um, you become very close with those people. If, if you know, you, you it really separates the good from the bad. Mm -hmm. Like you quickly realize who is yeah. you know who is there like supporting you and yeah. who is out to get you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we had an amazing community. Used. Corsair.com in conjunction with the AT boot camp and wound up took it in September last year mm -hmm. and got a 22. Um, so 2022. Yeah, that's right. 18 2022. Yep. Yep. So you can do it. Even if you've taken the DAT a couple times mm -hmm. and if you've gotten like, I don't know, 15 or 17, you can make a big jump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, on that note, even if you've changed your major, even if you've failed a class, mm -hmm. even if you've had a downward trend in your GPA, you make it. You can do it. Yeah, you can definitely do yeah. it. If it, you stay persistent. Yeah. I mean, our, a good friend of ours, um, I won't name his name if he prefers to remain anonymous. I'll get him on the channel one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know exactly who you're talking he'll about. He'll be on here eventually. Yeah. Um, he, how many? Emission cycles had he been through? Five? Like maybe? Five? Yeah. And he was 32 years old? Yeah. And he's headed to AT still in, in Mesa? Yeah. But yeah, what are we leaving out? There's some so other So we, we haven't stated that you, you got accepted to Midwestern, even we after all of that. We haven't given, yeah. yeah. That's the, the last piece of the, the puzzle. Yeah. So I got my Midwestern Arizona and Midwestern Illinois interviews this year went to both of them and promptly after like uh you know I, I think glendale was the longest was mm -hmm. the longer out of the two was like only it only took like a week after the the interview before they were you know contacting me saying hey like we want you to come to the school um and that feeling is like nothing like, After all that hard work. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the most cathartic, most rewarding thing you can imagine. Yeah. Um, after pouring, you know, your heart and soul into this pursuit, after putting all this long nights, sleepless nights, um, heartache, after, you know, after like failing a test or, you know, 
triumphing over over tough exam. Um, to feel that feeling is, is really worth it. We'll keep you up. Uh, we'll keep the channel updated on your progress in dental mm -hmm. school because people definitely want to yeah. kind of know how you're progressing through. Yeah, um, but I'll come yeah. on later once we've uh, we've gotten a little bit into my math of my um, my first year of dental first school. year my D one year. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, thank you for sharing your story. If you have any questions for Forrest, comment. And if you like this video and it resonated with you, please share it with another friend. Alrighty. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like me to do more of these interviews, please let me know. For now, here's a video of Tego.